Okay, so we're done hot coating. I flipped the board over. Um, now it's time to install the single fin fin box. This is your standard Bane box, um, Fins Unlimited uh, 10 and a half inch um, box. I've already drew out where I want it to go. I've centered it up. There's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can, I used to use a template like this and then set your router. You're gonna need a router of some sort. Um, you don't have to have a router. You can get away with using a Dremel and I'll get to that in a second. Um, so you set your depth to the bit, the, the depth of the, of the box um, and you route out the hole. Now, the thickness of this board back here is, per, is thin, right? Now, and you're all the way back here, like three, three and a half inches, whatever, four inches up from the tail. Um, you're not going to set it down all the way because there's a little bit, you're, you're gonna grind away at this. It's gonna, you're gonna figure out the maximum amount that you can do. I've already measured it with a caliper. And then you're gonna adjust your router to that and route in, and then you're gonna grind away the rest. So that's why you can get this flush. Okay, so you're gonna need a router. And I'm just using a laminate router, a trim router. This Dremel Trio also would work, but you have to set the depth of the bit. I'm gonna use a combination of the two. I'm gonna use this to, to get out the foam because it has a variable speed, which I like. Um, this does not, this you know spins at 30,000 RPMs and it just makes a ton of a racket and it just throws stuff everywhere. Now, what I like to do, and you don't have to do it this way, you can just use a template, mark out the size of the box, tape it to the board, and then router out the hole. What I like to do to minimize the dust, and this is just my personal preference, you don't need to do it this way. This isn't how most people do it, it's just the way I like to do it. I like to take a Dremel with a cutting bit, cut all the way around this, peel off, the fiberglass, um, so I'm not blowing it all over the place when I'm when I'm routing. You could use a vacuum to try to collect it, but it's hard to to vacuum and use a router at the same time unless you have a you know unless you have a tool holder of some sort, which I don't. So this is just one way that I I found works for me. Typically, you're not doing it on a on a tinted or I'm not doing it on a tinted board, so I might have some problems matching up the color if I make a mistake um, cutting. Um, anyways, that's just the risk I'm willing to take. So um, this isn't necessarily the proper way to do it. It's just one way of doing it. It's the way I like doing it. But like I said, I've kind of mentioned how um, you can do it the easiest way is to use a template, tape it down, route it the hole, and then sink your box in, mix up some resin, which we'll do later. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do, grab my vacuum, I'm gonna cut around, peel this out. Then I'm gonna use the router to route out everything. Um, what I like about also this method is then I can test fit to see if I'm if I'm off or not. But again, if you're using a template, you, that doesn't matter so much. I realize that some of you might not have a router and there's a few ways you could do it. You could use the Dremel, cut this all out, peel this out, and then in, use, a, use a carbide bit, put in here, this will get you by. There are certain cutting bits you can get for the Dremel as well. And then what you can do is you can use the template and just set the depth of this. Some of these Dremels come with a little little foot that allows you to adjust how far down a bit can go. So that's that's one type. But if you have a cheap Dremel um, that doesn't have that, doesn't have that feature, you can get a, a drywall bit, a drywall carbide bit, or you can get a specific cutting bit that they sell. Um, I think these are uh, 1 8 inch um, collets. I forget exactly, but anyways. Um, and you can use it to cut all the way around and it just takes you a lot longer. Go slow, it'll work great. Um, I've done that before I invested in routers. Um, so, because I use the routers for other stuff, but it is particularly nice for cutting out the fin boxes, the, the, the templates, or I should say the holes. All right, I'm gonna turn on the other camera and, uh, and the vacuum and we'll get started. Just gonna put this down here.
here I'm just going to use the router to router all that out. One piece of fiberglass. Look at that. It's pretty darn close. I'll have to clean it up a little bit. But now I can router it out. It's looking pretty good. This thing's got a crap load of power and is loud as hell. So. I don't know if I'll be able to use the vacuum with it because uh, it's hard to control otherwise. So I'm doing it in stages. Not really the proper way of doing it, but anyways, it works for me.
we're pretty close. I'm just going to touch it up and then we'll try to fit it in. Okay. Let's see how it fits. I had one little mistake, one little boo boo right there, but minor. Everything else looks nice and even. It'll look fine. And I think it's deep enough. Yep. I might trim it down just a little bit more. I won't bother to show that because it's the same thing just to get it down there. So anyway, you see, nice clean hole. Um, this right here. The stringer, um, typically if it's, this is a, a board, uh, a blank that is from a factory and it has a stringer, it's gonna be made from like balsa or basswood or some type of like wood. Um, not fire, not uh, plywood. You'll be able to probably route out part of it. It'll route easier and might even snap off a little easier. I don't recommend that probably, but I would route the whole thing out. It'll route easier because it's not plywood. Plywood's a little bit harder to route out. Um, so, anyways, there you go. It fits. And uh, we're gonna mix up some epoxy next and epoxy it in. Uh, I recommend doing that part of the epoxying on a cold day, a colder day, um, you know, not like 30 degree temperatures if you can avoid it, if you don't have a slow setting epoxy. Um, if you have a fast setting epoxy, what can happen is that the epoxy gets really hot and it can melt the foam. Um, so keep that in mind, uh, be careful. And uh, that's it. So just when you're doing this, just really make sure that the fin, where the spot for the fin fits in down here, is below this line here. That's super important, obviously, because if you grind away, the fin box won't work. Um, and the way these fin boxes work, I'll show you um, at the end of this video, or actually, I might show you next, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll epoxy the fin box in. So I just wanna go over real quick how one of these fin boxes work. You got one of these tabs and it slides into a slot. So this is a fin tab. It's got a screw that fits through the fin here. And then it screws in to draw it up tight. So I'm gonna slip it in here. Right like that, so it slips in. Just gonna push it down. And then this fin, the fin has this little little pin here. And it slides in here right like this. Hopefully I'm getting this on the camera. So it slides in this slot right here. And then it slides back. And then you line up the tab with, with the screw hole. And then you just tighten it down. And then that's it. And then you can adjust it to wherever you want it to be. I'm gonna leave the fin in because I'm going to make sure to look up the board. And when I when I when I put the epoxy in to, um, to set this. And to make sure that it's like in the right spot, I'm gonna use some tape just to hold it, keep it 90 degrees. So uh, that's why I put the fin in. Okay, ready to epoxy in the fin box. I've mixed up some epoxy already. Uh, I added a little bit of tint to it just so it kind of matches the, um, the tint job I've done on the bottom. I'm gonna pour it in into the fin box. I have a little foam brush to smooth it out. Once it, once I squish this down, it's gonna overflow everywhere. Um, and I have some tape if I need to line up the fin. Um, so I'm just gonna fill, fill this up. I might've mixed up too much, but that's okay.
basically once you <clears throat> push the fin box down it's going to squish out now some people like using a piece of fiberglass they wrap the fin box in fiberglass and then squish it down i don't i've tried it it works i, I found i've done it a few, i've done it with it without it i haven't really noticed any real difference in strength or anything the only thing um is sometimes you can mix um something called i think it's cabosil which is a which is a thickening agent to this i think i've heard of people using i think baking powder a uh, baking soda as well um, it just helps thicken it up i haven't i can't be bothered to do that either um, only because this works fine um, you might want to thicken it you might not the other thing is you should wipe this down with acetone or give it a good sanding I'm just gonna give it a good sanding it's already fairly rough I'm going to just test squishing it down. Let's see if anything squishes out. Need a little bit more in the front. The back is squished out a bit. I need to level this up a bit actually. So. I'm just going to put a all kinds of stuff squishing out I'm not too concerned because I'm going to be sanding this anyway um, that's why you do it before you do your sanding I'm just gonna even this out a bit gonna feather this out a bit so it makes it easier to sand that's pretty much it now I'm just gonna take a piece of tape I'm just gonna even up that fin a little bit All right, let's set, and uh, next we'll be sanding. Uh, actually, I'll probably install the leash plug. Uh, I might put a GoPro mount um, FCS plug on the nose for a GoPro camera, and then we'll sand. <laughs> 